What is up, everybody? Welcome into this Friday episode of Flippin' Bats. This one's going to be a lot of fun today. We're going to talk about all of the division races in baseball and who I think is going to win them. We also have things that make you go, hmm? We got a lot of them again this week. It's going to be a blast. Also, tail of the tape, Yankees, Astros, big series taking place in New York this weekend. Four-game series, actually. We're going to break that all down. Who has the best offense, defense, pitching, manager, all that good stuff. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Fly ball onto the track. At the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. And gone. What a game. What a moment. Happy Friday, everybody. It is almost the weekend. We got a good show for you. As always, I am joined by Alex Curry. And Alex, I know she's here. Taylor Swift. It's officially have you, Taylor have Swift when, week in LA. The, Sparkles you, are coming out. I'm wearing. You've not gone. When do just, you go? I go on Monday. Monday? Yeah, but she plays tonight. I am I'm just gonna be in Sparkles like all the way up until her show, and I'm gonna keep rubbing it in your face that I'm going and you're not. <laughs> Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> if I had an extra, maybe it would bring you. But yeah, thanks. Sorry. Appreciate that. Hope you have a blast. I'll watch on the couch. But other good news, we have a billboard. We do have a we billboard. Have a billboard. We got our first billboard. Can I we didn't. Show it? I didn't know this. I, no I didn't know this. But yeah, if you're watching, you can see it. We have a billboard up. It's actually at the field where they shot the Bad News Bears. Mm -hmm. So it's not far from where we are currently. And it's, yeah, a big billboard with the hit this sign. And I think it's on like an outfield wall, it looks like. And you can it says to take a picture with it, and we'll put it on flipping bats. And and there's our big mugs right there next to it with some players below it. We got so, like Otani and Jazz. Is that who's on there? It's Otani and Jazz. Yeah, we're gonna have to go over there. At some, we're gonna we're gonna have to go over there soon. And we should see who can hit it. We should actually like just throw and see who can hit it. I like my it. odds. I like my odds. Okay. Don't you remember when we were in Philly during the World Series and we went in that little? It was like the kid zone, and we were throwing pitches. Oh yeah. And I. Right down the middle, like yeah, I, like, yeah. I just it's okay. No, I know. I like the doubt. Give me doubt because I'm. I'm not lady. doubting you. I just believe in what That's, my job was no, for a long was. time of my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, <laughs> yes. Things that happened. Yeah. Max Scherzer got his first start yesterday Ooh. with the Rangers. Tough start to his Rangers uh, debut. First inning, threw over 30 pitches, gave up three runs in that inning. So. It's the most pitches he's thrown in an inning all season long. So tough, tough start to his Rangers career. Kind of tough start for all the new pitchers in the AL West because Lucas Giolito also had a tough start for the Angels. So now it's just up to your brother Saturday. this weekend to see how he does. I mean, not real, kind of new team, just back with the Astros. But see if he can get it off to a good start. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But uh, you mentioned it off the top of the show. We have a lot of really tight races in the divisions right now. So what we're going to do now that we're in the second half of the season, mm -hmm. we're going to have a playoff picture update. We are going to run through each division, and you're going to give me who you think is going to run away with that division. Because right. I believe this might come down to the last couple of weeks in a couple of these divisions. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of a lot of tight races. One of those is is not the NL East, so we'll talk no, about no, no, no. The, that's the, the wild one. card teams there. But the Braves, the Braves <laughs> have that one. So. That is the only <laughs> one that's like, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a chance. Yep. All right, let's it. do this. Okay, so let's get started in the AL East. Orioles or Rays? Who do you think is going to take that division? Orioles and Rays are definitely the the. Top two teams in that division. Orioles are 66 and 41. The Rays being 66 and 44. And then after that's the Blue Jays. They're seven and a half back. I, I think this is a race between the Orioles and the Rays. Look, I, the Orioles, I, I wish they had done more at the trade deadline, but they've been the team on the trend upwards. And the Rays have been on the trend downwards, mm -hmm. playing 500 baseball for the last two months. I'm going to say... I'll say the Orioles win this division. They did enough throughout the regular season when the Rays were historically good yep. to stay 
within reach, you know? Like they were keeping pace. They they just needed to yeah. be within, you know, they never fell like too far out of it while the Rays were on that absurd stretch of games. And then when they started playing 500 ball, the Orioles kept playing great and and eased their way back into things, beat the Rays in series and and now now here they are in first place. I'll say the Rays, or I'll say the Orioles end up winning this division. So you're ready to go against your Blue Jays beginning of the season pick to win the division. Yeah, I think seven and a half out beginning of August. It's certainly possible. It's not crazy. Yeah. Uh, we saw what the Braves did last year with the Mets, and they were it, they were ten down to the last second to last but, series of the. You know, season. I I just yeah, I, I'll I'll say the Orioles win this. Okay. Let's move on to the AL Central. Do you think it's going to be the Twins or the Guardians? My problem here is I everybody in this division was sellers except for the Twins. Yeah. The Guardians end up with Aaron Savali going to the Rays, who's been fantastic all year long. So getting rid of one of your, uh, one of, if not your best starter this season, doesn't feel like the best way to win a division. So if, if they don't believe in themselves, why am I going to believe in them? They got rid of Josh Bell and Aaron Savali, and, and I'll take the Twins. The Twins didn't yeah. do a ton either, but they, they weren't sellers, and I do, I've, I've liked their roster in this division for a while. I think they can pull it out. Which is crazy, too, to essentially be sellers when a division is within reach. But yeah, I also think to do. they are under the the Guardians are under 500. They're 53 and 55, and I think they had a perhaps fair discussion with themselves of what's best case scenario. Yeah, we win the division. Is our team talented enough to to win the World Series as it currently sits? And maybe they had that discussion of no, it's not. So let's let's sell off some of the pieces that we can get some good pieces for the future, mm-hmm. and 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 do that. So right. I'll, I think the Twins win this division. All right, let's move on to the AL West, where it's already a tight race for the top right now between the two Texas teams. Is it going to be the Rangers or the Astros atop of the AL West at the end of the season? Yeah, so currently uh, currently they're pretty much neck and neck yeah, at the, at the top of the division, right? Yeah, it's a half a game difference there. Um, I'm going to take the Astros here. I... I, I liked the Rangers' moves, mm-hmm. but as I mentioned often in our trade deadline special episode was, look, I, I feel like people are treating the Scherzer edition like it's Cy Young Hall of Fame Max Scherzer, and he just hasn't been that this year. His ERA on the season is over four. Uh, then the start, right you know, his gates. first start right out yeah. of the gates, that first inning, Brutal. not a great start there for the Rangers, and and then the Astros go and add Justin, which they needed a they needed a rotation arm. This is what was confusing to me when Dana Brown came out and said the GM of the Astros. So we're not in the market for a starter. I thought that was a big mistake. They added Kendall Graveman to the bullpen. Was that going to be it? It was not. They ended up adding Justin. That was the piece they needed to get the band back together. Yeah. So I'm going to say the Astros won the division. All right, let's move to the National League. And we you kind of mentioned this off the top of the segment. The Braves are running away with the NL East. They're they're a lock for the NL East. So, yep. do you believe that anybody else will make it out of this division as a wild card team? I think the I think the Phillies make I think the Phillies make the playoffs. I don't think the Marlins are going to get in. Obviously, Mets, Nationals, Mets selling off. They're not going to get in. Nationals yeah. are not getting in. I'm going to say, you know, at the beginning of this year, it, it looked like this could could be one of the best divisions in baseball. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say at least one other gets in. I'll say the Phillies. Okay, let's move to the NL Central here. Another fun little race. Reds, Brewers, and then Cubbies going on a nice little winning streak recently. This has turned into a fun race. A lot of people like like to give this division a lot of crap at the beginning of the year for, well, this division sucks, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? It's one of the most exciting. You got the Reds and the Brewers doing what they're doing. They've been battling it out at the top of the division. And then you have the Cubbies just scoring 20 runs a game, trying to creep back into it. And and they have creeped back into it. They're, what, four four games? They're 54 and 53, creeping back into it. Uh, I'm going to say, we talked about this one a bit yesterday. I don't think the other teams in the division uh, did enough 
to, I will say the Reds win this division. I Dang. think their young core mixed with getting Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo back. And yes, they didn't add another, they didn't add a big starting pitcher. But since the beginning of July, the Reds team pitching ERA has been one of the best in baseball. Yep. And you add back Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo, pair him with Andrew Abbott, and then the young core of rookies on offense that are just so fun and exciting. I think they can get this done. And I don't think the Brewers did enough by adding, you know, Carlos Santana. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't think they did enough. All right. That's fair. Let's wrap things up with the NL West. Dodgers, Giants, or D-backs come out on top? Yeah, I think it's kind of under the radar here that the Giants are only two and a half back, yeah. right? It feels like. The Dodgers have been playing great for a while. Uh, you know, it was we were starting to talk about them being the second best team in the mm -hmm. NL. The the Braves obviously being the first there, but Dodgers are closing that gap. And then you look at the standings, and the Giants are right there on their heels. They Two are and a half. Right the D-backs there. aren't too much behind them. Padres uh, not there the yet, but playing much. Padres are playing good baseball, but are they going to get to the division? No, I, I doubt they win the division. However, I will say that the Dodgers win this division. I don't think I don't think the Giants have the firepower to beat them in the division. I don't think the D-backs have what they need to yet. I, I think the, the D-backs, this is the first year of them showing who they are yeah. and what they will be to come. But I don't think they're there yet. I think they're good, but I don't think they win the division. I'll go Dodgers here. Okay, now when you're, you're talking about firepower, the – other team within this division that has a ton of firepower and are just starting to play like they should have been all season are the Padres. Do you see them kind of sliding into a wild card spot? That's a good question. If I had to, to say right now, I'd say yes. Okay. I just, I think it's, but at a certain point, it's they like, when pieces. do you feel like an idiot for continuing to believe in the Padres? And they might make me. I feel like you need the whole season. I feel like you really got to give them, you got to give them a <laughs> chance. <laughs> they could slide in right at the very end. You never know. They could. And I, I'm not a huge, like, there's not a ton of National League teams that are, you know, like at the beginning of the year, you thought for sure yeah. one of those wild card spots was going to go to the Braves or the Mets. One yeah. of those two teams was getting a wild card spot. Well, that's not happening anymore. Nope. The Braves are going to win the division. The Mets are not getting a wild card spot. No. So other than that, where are these wild card spots going to come from? Brewers, Reds, D-backs, Giants, like a Marlins? Yeah. Yeah, it but could. the Padres are the theoretically. Yeah. The Padres should get a spot. Even they should. but but man, I, I feel like I'm going to look back at the end of this year and we're, we're going to be able to put together a compilation of Ben saying, at some point, the, the, the Padres are going to go, on, and there's, I'm or, just going to look like an idiot. Or they figure it out right towards the end of the season. They sneak into a wild card spot, and then they're the team that just starts clicking on all cylinders during the postseason. So you're saying there's a chance. Maybe, Alex, maybe. When I, you have that kind of talent, anything is possible. If I had to pick right now. I'm going in the positive side of things. I, I said they'd get in. Right. I, I just, I worry about what I said. Yep. But I say they get in. <laughs> they have made you go, hmm. Yes. This whole season. Which leads us to our next hmm. segment. Let's sit down for things that make you go, hmm. Because there's been a lot of those this week. There's been a lot. This segment, Alex, is quickly becoming... This is favorite. one of my favorite segments. It's yeah. a lot of fun. I like yeah. it. So let's get started with our first things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> the Yankees deadline decisions. This one what? speaks for itself. You know, there were two directions you could have and needed to go. You needed to choose one. You needed to be a buyer or you needed to be a seller. And they didn't do anything. I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand what the Yankees did. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't understand what Brian Cashman is thinking. I am completely shocked at the Yankees' handling 
of the trade deadline. You know, we were doing our, we were live at yeah. the trade deadline. And I was getting updates in my ear of, oh, so-and-so just got traded. And I hear, the Yankees just traded for And I'm like, oh, my God. They're going to do it. And then it was, it was Cannon Middleton and Spencer Howard. And I was like, what? And I, my mind still is like, what? Yeah. So, yeah, that was yeah. a real head scratcher. Hmm. On to our next things that make you go, hmm. The Marlins scoreboard shot at the Detroit population. Alex, this just keeps our streak of scoreboards going I and things it. that make you go, hmm, and this one might take the cake. This was an unnecessary shot at the city of Detroit, and I don't appreciate it. Matt Veerling came up to the plate, and you know, Alex, how stadiums often put up like fun facts about a yeah. player when, when they come up to bat. Well, when Matt Veerling came up, the Marlins put on their scoreboard, player note, player note. Since 1950, Detroit has lost 65% of its population. I mean, it's what? not a lie. <laughs> well, neither is it a lie that like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like Eminem is from Detroit. You could have gone. There's a million not lies, but they don't make <laughs> sense to put under Matt Veerling's player note. Yeah, and especially weird. if it's going to be like a, a, a not positive thing about the city. I love Detroit. I, everybody, every I, <laughs> Detroit gets too much slander, man. I'm serious. It's a beautiful city. I love it. It's a, it's a blue collar town. I, I love Detroit. I just felt like it was an unnecessary shot at the city. Boo Marlins. Boo. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our next things that make you go. Hmm. Max Scherzer's comments about the Mets direction. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday a lot yesterday mm -hmm. and I, we're a little bit on different pages here, but the comments in itself are what they are. We we've discussed him. He yeah. came out and said that I spoke to the front office and they told me that they were not going to be competitive next year. Uh, and maybe not even 2025, but the goal is to be competitive by 2026. And that was something that he didn't want to be a part of. And he asked about free agents and who, who they were planning on signing to be competitive. And he was basically told, uh, no, we're not going to be signing any of the upper echelon guys. We're going to be on the smaller deals within free agency in 2024. Those are the comments we discussed yesterday. I didn't personally love that he aired the private conversation between him and Billy Epler, the GM and Steve Cohen, that he aired that out publicly. I think, I think he could have just said, I spoke to the front office. I decided to waive my no trade clause because the direct, I didn't exactly love the direction um, that they were whatever, but he, he went then then all that's, in. It's withholding information. Like he shared why he waived the no trade clause. He is 39 years old. He wanted to stay in New York and he doesn't have the ability and the time to wait another two years before they are going to be where he thought they were going to be this season. And it's not his responsibility to take care of the Mets anymore. They obviously didn't take care of him and that's it. It's done. Yeah, I mean, but it's not his play. He yeah. doesn't need to it's honest it's withholding draw. information. He doesn't need to get players don't get like who needs all the information? Like he's giving all the information, but that from a private conversation, like he doesn't owe any, like he made the decision that he made Yep. and who, who doesn't respect it. He had a no trade clause. Yeah. He decided to waive the no trade clause because of the conversation he had with the front office. Who's not respecting the decision. And he doesn't owe anybody the, the reasoning or, and doesn't need to use a private conversation. He also doesn't owe the Mets. Right. To say, oh, I'm going to protect them to make them right. look okay. So just, no, he's looking right. out for himself. Yep. I thought it was fine. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's stay in the Mets tree <laughs> for our next things that make you go, hmm. Mets are paying more money to players not on their team than 12 other teams combined. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's quite the... But, but what I will say, and again, I keep going back. We dove in on this yesterday in the Mets situation. One thing that is not a worry 
to Steve Cohen is, is the money. His worry and want is to win with the Mets. And he has said from the beginning that he's going to win from within. They're yep. going to build the organization. That's how they're going to win. And they're going to supplement that team with free agency. Well, in the meantime, in the meantime of all of that, he decided to, well, I still want to try and win. I'll just pay a bunch of money to free agents and we'll have a competitive team right yeah. now. Well, that didn't work. And now they're all out the door. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And, and a lot of that money that we just spoke about is due to Max Scherzer and Justin, mm -hmm. who on their way out and in the prospects in return, they sent a lot of that money to the other team. So a big chunk of that is because. Of, so he basically sent out those players that aren't under contract for a long time and paid for the prospects to come in to send them the money to get the prospect. And you look at their minor league system now and it's exponentially better than stacked. it was a month ago. It's stacked. So, but you look down and you think that the payroll is over $150 million for guys not on the roster. And you know who I, I don't have a problem with it. It's not my money. It's not your money, Alex. It's Steve's money. And he's, he, got, plenty. he's got many, many billions. So what are many, many millions to him? Well, I guess we're getting the answer to that. Yeah. And not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yeah. All right. On to our next things that make you go. Hmm. Eduardo Rodriguez blocking the trade <laughs> to the Dodgers. This is uh, look mind blowing. Just to explain again, if you didn't hear the situation, the Dodgers who were all in on trying to get another big pitcher went all in on, on Justin. They were in on that ended up not getting him when he went to Houston and then turned all of their sights to Eduardo Rodriguez and getting a trade done for him. And they did. They talked to the Tigers. They got the right prospects. They knew what was going to happen. They were getting Eduardo Rodriguez and the trade was done. The only issue was that Eduardo Rodriguez has a 10 team, no trade clause. Which is fine, right? The Dodgers probably aren't on that. They're a winning team. They're a winning organization. You want to go play for You're the Dodgers. In Los and Angeles, maybe beautiful weather, yeah. good city. Maybe go compete for a World Series. Yeah. Well, well, well. The Dodgers were on his 10 team no trade clause list. And he used that. He blocked the trade to the Dodgers to stay with the Tigers this season not go play in the playoffs with the Dodgers and he used it when that became public. Of course it was like, Hmm, but I'll say again, he put them on his list. He has every right to do this. He blocked it fine. That is all fine and dandy. It's just a head scratcher when you hear, wow, he's going to get to go from the Tigers to the Dodgers. And then he's like, nah, I want to, I, I don't want to do that. And his agent came out, I think, last night with a statement kind of explaining what was happening. And it was, was similar it? to what you were talking about, about families. He said, yeah. I negotiated a no-trade clause in his contract for a reason. With all the money, glamour, and fame that comes with being a professional athlete, there's also a very difficult personal side. Many players' wives and their children suffer a lot of instability in their lives, especially when their spouses get traded. I did not take that lightly. Yep. Skipping ahead, as for the Dodgers in particular, once I was granted permission to to speak with them regarding the trade, we did our best to come up with a way to make it happen where everyone was comfortable with the outcome. Unfortunately, we just ran out of time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have it. There hey, you, have you know, it. I've spoken at length over the last few days about the logistics behind trades with families and where players live that when you hear about a trade, you, people don't think about that stuff, you know, but there, there's so much uprooting of your life mm -hmm. and if you have a you know if a player is single it's so much easier yeah but go. if you're married with a family and children it's uprooting your entire life it's taking your kids out of school it's taking them away from their friends it's moving away from potential family that's moved around there's so much that goes into it yeah it was just a it's a it was a crazy situation that was all coming together yeah. right at the deadline yeah. and he thought the Dodgers got their guy yeah. and then last they second to hear this it was wild wild all right on to our next things that make you go hmm. we talked about this yesterday the Astros no hitter 
and the Mets buck off happening the same day as your brother, Justin Verlander's trade. If this isn't just the epitome of how these seasons have, have gone. gone yeah. On the day that Justin gets traded to the Astros after everything that's happened with the Mets this season being historically bad, the worst, this is the most disappointing season in the history of baseball. And then you have the Astros who have been creeping their way back up in the division and getting to the, finally catching the Rangers. And then you make the trade for Justin. And it's like, wow, what a day that night, the night of the trade deadline. Framber Valdez threw a no hitter. Yep. The first Astros no hitter since Justin threw it in 2019. The first for a left hander. The Mets lost a game on a balk off. They balked in the yeah. winning run. And in that same game, Pete Alonso took a foul ball off the face. It just was like polar opposite games. And it, it just left you a scratch in your head of this is just the epitome of these two seasons. Yeah, that was weird. All right. On to our next things that make you go. Hmm. Team USA winning 43 to one against New Zealand. I couldn't believe the this score? score 43 to one. This is a ridiculous score. This is disgusting. It's unacceptable. I don't understand how you can give up a run to New Zealand. <laughs> I'm glad you went that way. I didn't know which way you were going to go with it. I'm happy you went that. I'm like, you never stop scoring. You keep going. Uh, yeah, 43 to one. And That's you impressive. might say, how does it get? This was in four innings. This was a, this was a mercy rule after four innings, 43 runs in four innings. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. That's so, insane. Uh, yeah. Just disappointing that coaches could let it get to this where yeah. New Zealand was able to <laughs> score a run. Yeah. Really disappointing. <laughs> All right, we got one more things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> Slate's very unique first career strikeout. Very unique is, is one way to put it. Arizona Ooh. Diamondbacks, Slade Ciccone with his first career strikeout on the mound. But it is more about how it happened, which is why we are discussing it. So first Ooh. career strikeout, it was a foul tip off of the, the knob of the bat for the batter for the Giants. Foul tip off the bat that ended up ricocheting down into, how do I say it? The catcher's growing balls. <laughs> say it. <laughs> Just, I mean, it's exactly where, and he went to like, like protect himself and ended up like catching the ball. <laughs> so it hit off the, off the batter's knob of his bat into the crotch of the catcher where he ended up catching it with his hand <laughs> and protecting himself, but it never hit the ground. Thus, as a result, it was a caught foul tip, a, a tip to the tip for the first, for the first strikeout <laughs> of Slade Ciccone's MLB career. Beautiful. It, baseball. It's hard to not be romantic about baseball. Really? <laughs> Oh man. Okay. You went there. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up things that make you go. <laughs> There's a lot of directions you could go with that. You know, I've been, yeah, you just went direct. I respect it. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Ah, oh. I, I keep <laughs> wanting to go. There's a lot of directions. There's a lot of directions. You know? Yeah. Off, you went, you off went the straight wood to the, to the wood. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll move on. Okay. We'll move on. Let's move on to tail of the tape. <laughs> Tail of the tape. We've yeah. got a big four game series. Actually started Thursday. Yeah. This series. Yeah. Last night we got the Astros going to New York, which is actually works out really great for your brother because he just got traded. The first series with the team is going to be in New York. So we got. Yeah. There's a lot going that on. That does here. help the logistics behind. Oh, everything. As you were just talking about. Yeah. Uprooting your life and moving everybody to a new city. So yeah. we're going to go through. We're going to say who has a better offense, defense, manager, starters, bullpen. This weekend, who we believe is going to take it this weekend. And then, yeah, see who's going to win the series. So let's get started with offense. Who you got? So offense, as you know, Alex, now Aaron Judge is back. Yeah. Aaron Judge, reigning MVP winner. 
So I'm going to say that the team with Jordan Alvarez, Jose Altuve, <laughs> Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker, um, Jose Abreu, Chaz McCormick, I'm going to pick them as the better offense. It's crazy because neither of these teams have a top 10 offense when you're looking at numbers and stats, but right now, Everything is really clicking for yeah. the Astros. And they're just getting, they haven't had Jordan and Jose in and the lineup. And they just got him yeah. back. I'm also taking Houston here. I mean, yeah, they just got two of the biggest bats back in their lineup right at the trade deadline. It's, it was beautiful. Yep. Yep. So we're both taking the Astros. It Let's was beautiful. move wow. on. Alex getting poetic about the Astros offense. I'd... Would you look at that? It's back in the family now, so I can I can be <laughs> oh, kind. Yeah, now, yeah. now it's like now there's another family connection, so I'm back to being nice yeah. okay. about the Astros. Okay, let's go to defense. Who are you taking? Uh, I'm going to go with the Astros here. The Yankees' defense just not great. I'm sure Alex is going to come with the statistics here, but I, I the Astros, I good defense. Kyle Tucker out in right field, Gold Glove, Bregman good over at third base, the middle infield, Pena and Jose. Jose Abreu over at first base has been very good throughout his career. Maldonado behind the plate, one of the best back there. Yep. I'm going with the Astros. Yeah, I also went with the Astros here. They have a better fielding percentage, fewer errors committed, third most double plays turn, even though Yankees and the Yankees have the fewest double plays turn in Major League Baseball, better run save by fielding range and better defensive rating. So Astros on paper and just with the players you all mentioned, better defense. Yep. All right. Moving on to the manager. Who you got? Dusty. Yeah. Give me Dusty Baker. Love the guy. World Series champion, manager, World yep. Series champion, player, World Series champion, person, person. Yeah. I'm going Dusty Baker. Hands down, it's Dusty Baker. He's so I'm great. also a Dusty. <laughs> Everybody loves Dusty. Everybody and loves then when Dusty. you actually get to like know him a little bit and yeah. see him on a personal level, how yep. do you not love the guy? Yep. Like his attitude, he has fun. Every player rallies around. I mean, last season, do it for Dusty was was kind of the motto in the world series. And I think he probably raged harder than any player when they won. Like he's just, he's, he's a legend. He is a legend. He's a legend. All right, let's go to the starters who okay. you got. Um, so for me, I think this is probably a closer conversation before the addition of Justin. Yeah. Um, I, but I'm going to go Astros now with Justin Fremer Valdez, Hunter Brown, Christian mm -hmm. Javier, or Keedy coming back as well. And then on the Yankees side, yes, you have Carlos Rodon appearing to start, you know, he's back, he's healthy, and it looks like he's starting to get back to more of himself, along with Garrett Cole, who's the favorite right now to win the AL Cy Young Award. Um, but the Yankees have rotation issues in terms of Luis Severino. What's going on? The, the guy just has not been very good. Uh, everything that just came out about Domingo German uh, not going to pitch for the remainder of the season for the New York Yankees. Um, I went with the Astros here. Yeah, let's uh, let's run through the matchups yeah. this weekend. Obviously, Thursday's game already happened. Um, Friday, as of now, Hunter Brown, Luis Severino, who are you taking here? Uh, right now, again, Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown, yeah. So this is where it gets interesting. Saturday and Sunday are both empty yeah. right now in probable starters, but I'm guessing Justin Saturday, yeah. maybe Framber. I think that lines up Would after. It? When did he? When was the no Tuesday. hitter? Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe. Thank you. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But both I'm, are empty right now. I'm pretty but, sure Justin's throwing Saturday. So if, yeah, I figured he'd throw one of the two because yeah. they're both empty right now. And it's Saturday, it's Nestor Cortez. And then Sunday's Carlos Rodon for oh, the it is. Yankees. That's a, that is official. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so it's just Justin over Nestor. And if right. it is, Frank, we don't know. So, I, yeah, I'm with you. So I think two out of the three, I would take Astros. So yeah. I'm, take, I'm taking Astros. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Garrett doesn't pitch in the series, even more so. Like yeah. The Astros. Yeah. All right. Finally, bullpen. Astros. Yeah. Well, that's, there you have it. Clean sweep. Um, I, um, uh, the Astros have one of the best bullpens in baseball and they had the best bullpen in baseball last year. It's great again this year. Added Kendall Graveman. Mm -hmm. I went with the Astros. 
I also went with the Astros. As you mentioned, they just added Graveman. They have more saves, better inherited runners score percentage. They have more strikeouts, fewer walks, all around better, better group in the bullpen. Man, oh man. Wow. Look at this. Is this the first time board. we've been 100% on the same? I think we both were. I think we both were recently. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Uh, was, it, Dodgers. was it Dodgers? I think I went Reds bullpen, though. Over the yeah. Day. But regardless. Ooh, all right. Look at this. So Astros are winning Man. this weekend? Uh, I mean, yeah, we're not going to go. Uh, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen, but Nobody I don't think either knows. of us are going to no. intentionally choose to take no. the Yankees here. No, taking the Astros. Wow. They're flying high right now. Yeah, Astros are on a high, Yankees are on a low. Though, you'd think of it with the talk out there that the Yankees were like the worst team in baseball. They're still within reach of a wild card spot. Yeah. And they still have a good team. That's why I was, that, they should have done something at the deadline. Either go all in or go in, get something to add yeah. to your offense, or be sellers. And they didn't do either. That's why it was frustrating. But, you know, yes, you look down at the division and I, they're in last. But they're three and a half games out of a wild card exactly. spot. Exactly. But it is their entire division in front of them. You got Boston right ahead of them, Toronto and Tampa, and then Houston's the other wild card team up there, <laughs> right above them. So, yep. yeah, it's going to be interesting. All right, battles. Uh, going to be a good weekend. Um, yeah, Saturday with Smoltz coming up tomorrow, where Hall of Famer. Atlanta Braves legend John Smoltz joins me every single Saturday. We talk a lot of trade deadline stuff, talk a lot of Mets, Yankees, Braves, Angels, all good conversations there as well. So I hope everybody, including you, Alex, has a great weekend. Thank you. Because Taylor Swift isn't this weekend for you. No, she's Monday. here this weekend. So I'm gonna going to rub Monday. it in even more on the Monday show because then I go that night. I don't like this. Take it off. I'm very Take disappointed. She Why? actually, she's rubbing it in my face. Like a, a month ago, Alex was like, well, <laughs> there's a chance. Maybe I could, maybe you could come. And now it's just straight rubbing in the face. It is. This we is got sparkle nails. We got sparkle jackets. All We're right. just like living in a sparkly world. We're done. Have a good Are weekend, we? everybody. Saturday with Smoltz tomorrow. Thank you all for listening to this Friday episode. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast. Follow, subscribe, whatever it is you do. We're also on all social media, including YouTube, where you can watch everything at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. Thank you all for listening to this Friday episode. Until Saturday with Smoltz tomorrow, peace.